dried seaweed. Um, people like diggers uh, sell dried seaweed. The disadvantage is uh, um, it requires moisture to break it down, so um, it's uh, you can't say that it'll break down in two weeks. If it rains, it'll break down in two or three weeks. If it's dry, it might be there next year. Uh, so it requires moisture. Uh, there's often a smell associated with it. Uh, the supply of dried seaweed is erratic in Australia. Um, there are two main sources. There's the Australian seaweed, but normally bull kelp. There's uh, a lot of imported stuff, which is ascophyllum, which comes from the Northern Hemisphere. But the supply is quite erratic and a major problem. It's a major problem to Steve and myself. Uh, we need a good supply throughout the year. Uh, in Australia, it comes in in winter. So we have to work hard in winter. Come summer, we, uh, there's very little comes in. Cost is relatively high, about $4 a kilo at, um, in bulk. So that's a problem with dry seaweed. If we go to the liquid seaweed, liquid seaweed, it's easy to apply. Uh, you can make it in, uh, in June and sell it in December, that's fine. So it's available throughout uh, the year. There are now a number of products for specific crops. Like if you grow pasture or um, canola or um, roses, there are products that are designed for that. Not quite as advanced in um, Australia as in the UK. I, when I was in the UK, I think I counted 15 different crops just in the nurseries that it was uh, sold for with, with specific things for those crops. It's relatively cheap compared with conventional fertilizers for the same end result, and it's friendly to soil microbes. We'll talk a bit about that later. If we could have the next one. Oh, the disadvantages. Um, there are still numerous products on the Australian market which use old technology. Now, when I talk about old technology, I mean 1990s type technology. Uh, requires spray equipment. To get the best results from seaweed, <coughs> you need to apply it at the right uh, time. Particularly important for things like potatoes. If you apply it at the wrong time, you're wasting your time. Uh, most sick seaweeds are designed to feed the plant and the soil microbes. <coughs> They're not designed to provide all of the nutrients that the plant will need. So it's sort of a, and, and it's talked about as a tonic, and I don't like that approach. But seaweed is usually applied, liquid seaweeds are normally applied as a foliar feed. It goes into the um, leaves <coughs> so that any nutrients that are there uh, get dissipated within the month or so. Uh, it does feed the micro soil microbes, and we'll talk about that. Uh, there are relatively small amounts of MPK. How is it made? Most of the world's liquid seaweed is made by alkaline hydrolysis. That means you cook it up with a, um, a caustic, either a potassium carbonate, bicarbonate, or uh, hydroxide. About 10% is made just by emulsifying it, about 8% by fermentation. And then there are occasionally products on the market that are made by an enzyme digestion. Approximately. Is there a better time in the day to apply? Is it better in the morning or the afternoon or the evening? Uh, better in the evening, but it's early morning and, and evening. You don't want to apply it when it's uh, at the peak of the day. The lower the temperature you apply it, the more effective it is. Approximately 50% of the world's uh, Sea, liquid seaweeds are made from fresh seaweed. In Australia, it's a much smaller percentage, about 20%. What does it do for plants? Well, there are a whole load of things that it does. What I've done here is just list those for which there are scientific 
publicly documented um, research. Uh, increase in nutrient uptake, increase in yield, shelf life, frost tolerance, uh, decrease the water stress, both grade and salinity, increase for chlorophyll production, increase the resistance to fungal attack, sucking insect attack, increase in raka strength, that's the distance between the great berries, uh, increase in fruit set. If you mix it with uh, some synthetic fungicides, they're more uh, effective, more rapid germination, slower dying off, and increase in flowering in ornamentals. There are scientific studies, sometimes uh, a lot of them, like in terms of yield, I was involved a long time ago on some trials in the UK and there were 28 sites on potatoes and each bar one had an increase in yield um, and the average increase in, in yield was about 8%, just under 8%. Have they, have they been proper scientific studies? No, these are no these these are proper uh, documented scientific studies, which was you know a lot of them are published in the literature. When I started looking at liquid seaweed in um, seventy eight, there were probably two papers a year. Now there are uh, three papers a week on average, giving results of uh, trial. It's not only, um, there's, originally it was always based on brown seaweed in the northern hemisphere, Ascophyllum, which is um, the active in the, the seaweed used for, by Arcadian and uh, Maxicrop International. Um, there was, a, there's been a lot of trials on ones for bull kelp by particularly by the previous owners of Cecil and ourselves uh, and a number of other, um, there's a couple of groups in Tasmania that have done trial. Um, but there are a lot of um, red seaweeds which are, are, appear to be quite effective and these, a lot of scientific trials have been done in, um, in, in tropical, in more, you know, red seaweeds are more plentiful in tropical areas. In, in tropical agriculture, there's been a lot of trial. And, and if you look at it, the scientific literature at the moment, probably over half of them are uh, results on red seaweed uh, rather than the brown seaweed. Although there's still a lot coming out on brown seaweed. Um, there's a, a tremendous amount of work done on seaweeds because the pharmaceutical industries are looking for new um, uh, replacements for antibiotics. So the amount of money spent on seaweed research is absolutely worldwide is astronomical. More is spent um, per year on seaweed research than has been spent for the last 50 years on fertilizer research. Now, not all of that stuff that's been done on seaweed research is applicable to um, agriculture or growing things, but that's the basic, and there are, one of the things that I've been able to do is to look at the scientific thing and say, okay, well this is, for sake of argument, a, a polyphenol. Well, we know that polyphenols have a, these effects on plants, and we know that they're high in these seaweeds. Um, not that we've, we've strayed away from uh, bull kelp. We've done a lot of work on other seaweeds, um, but the problem that we face is if we wanted to go into large scale production, these other seaweeds often occur as mixtures with other seaweeds and uh, the problem of sorting it out and supply is, is, is quite large. Okay. Um, Sorry, just back to your previous slide. I always thought that seaweed um, stimulated root growth. Yeah, it does. I noticed it wasn't on that previous list. No, okay. Is well. No, no, it's, it's certainly, um, uh, I forget exactly. Yeah, certainly it stimulates root growth. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, no, okay, well, it, st it stimulates root growth for sure. Um, and it stimulates root growth 
um, more in the early stages than in the later stages. So if you've got a plant that uh, has, has grown a fair bit and uh, almost full size and you apply, you won't get uh, anywhere near the effect that you would if you'd applied it as... as, yeah. as so, well. so, say, advanced tree under stress or something like that? Yeah, it's look, uh, you will talk... We'll probably talk a little bit more about that, but we could certainly talk about it afterward. Um, one of the things that the root exudate, we'll talk about that, that f is material, which mainly sugar, which are made in the leaves and put down and come out into the rhizosphere, the area around the roots, and that feeds the microbes. Now, there are a group of, um, of um, fungi, which grow on the roots, which basically take up nutrients into the fungi and then they make it available to the roots. The mycorrhizal fungi can increase the volume of soil that the nutrients are taken by 2,000 times. So if you feed the seaweed to the plant and it produces increased root exudate, which is, is a common... Uh, Thing it does, and you've got mycorrhizal fungi in the soil, you'll get dramatic results. And there are products in Europe where people actually apply mycorrhizal fungal and then feed the plant seaweed, and you get absolutely dramatic effects. And in hydroponics, sometimes you get this effect uh, where you get dramatic effects from small amounts of liquid seaweed. I haven't brought any ones about hydroponics, but I've got some pictures which were done um, using our product, but we didn't sponsor it or anything. It was done by a, a capsicum grower in, uh, in Kindred in Tasmania, and he got an increased root development about five times the size from, uh, that he normally did. And, and in, in hydroponics, thing, particularly with... Uh, with well, capsicums, I know, root development is sort of a limiting factor. And he put, it was one part in uh, 1,500 uh, liquid seaweed in it, and he got these dramatic results. Yeah. And it was done completely, well, I knew he was doing it, and I knew the scientist who was helping him. He was an economist, uh, and uh, he got an interest in hydroponic, and he knew this guy who was with the department over there, and they worked on it together. And uh, he's quite a successful grower now. <laughs>